The Shark Deck. Paul Rubens, the actor who made Pee Wee Herman famous, has passed away at age 70. Hi, I'm Johnny Mack, and that is today's Daily Comedy News. Paul passed away after a private battle with cancer. A statement on his Instagram on Monday said that Rubens privately fought cancer for six years. He put out a posthumous statement which read, Please accept my apology for not going public with what I've been facing these last six years. I've always felt a huge amount of love and respect from friends, fans, and supporters. I loved you all so much and enjoyed making art for you. His character Pee Wee was created in the 1970s as a 10-minute bit when he was with the Los Angeles comedy troupe The Groundlings. Paul auditioned unsuccessfully for Saturday Night Live in 1980. He then went about creating the Pee Wee Herman show, which was billed as a live onstage TV pilot and had its premiere in early 1981 at the Groundlings. A national tour followed. And in 1981, HBO broadcast a version of it as a comedy special. I remember watching that back in the day. In 1980, Rubens had a small part as a waiter in the Blues Brothers movie. That same year, he played a put-upon hotel clerk who deals with Cheech and Chong in Cheech and Chong's next movie. Pee-wee started turning up on late-night talk shows, including Late Night with David Letterman, where Pee-wee doing his thing and Letterman doing his too-cool-for-school thing was comedy gold, writes the New York Times. Then in 1986, Pee-wee's Playhouse, a children-friendly version of Pee-wee's World that aired on CBS for five years. You may recall some of the characters, including Cherry, a talking armchair that gave hugs. There was a word of the day. There were bizarre toys. In one episode, Pee Wee married a fruit salad. In 1989, Rubens told Newsday, I never set out to do a big educational show. We're trying to expose children to as much creativity as we can muster in half an hour to be entertaining and to transmit some subliminal messages like nonconformity isn't bad. His career came to pretty much a halt in 1991. Rubens was arrested on a charge of indecent exposure at an adult movie theater in Florida. That led to a small fine, headlines, tons of jokes, and it was pretty much over from there. CBS had already canceled the Saturday show, but upon the scandal ended all reruns of the program. Rubens pleaded no contest. He was sentenced to community service, and as part of that service, he produced two anti-drug public service announcements. He had some acting credits, Murphy Brown, The Blacklist, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 1992's Batman Returns, and the movie Blow in 2001. On social media, Jimmy Kimmel wrote, Paul Rubens was like no one else, a brilliant and original comedian who made kids and their parents laugh at the same time. He never forgot a birthday and shared his delight for silliness with everyone he met. My family and I will miss him. Conan O'Brien on social. No tweet can capture the magic, generosity, artistry, and devout silliness of Paul Rubens. Everyone I know received countless nonsensical memes from Paul on their birthday, and I mean everyone in all caps. His surreal comedy and unrelenting kindness were a gift to us all. Damn, this hurts. Kathy Griffin wrote, The great Paul Rubens would send me hilarious gifts every year on my birthday. I didn't know he was ill. The last time we spoke, I invited him to one of my dinner salons, and he expressed that he didn't want to come because he was worried about COVID. Came to my house after my Trump photo scandal and spent time with me. Danny DeVito said, really loved working with him. Sandra Bernhard said, a true genius. Glad I got to work with him. So sad. Scott Ackerman wrote, incredibly saddened to hear of Paul Rubin's passing. Watching him on Letterman and then seeing Pee-wee's Big Adventure in 1985 was like a lightning bolt into my brain, waking me up to what was possible in doing comedy. It was the greatest thrill of my life to first interview him, then work with him on the TV show, then befriend him socially. I'm sure he did this for all his friends, but he would send me texts and funny gifts on my birthday every year. Wow, everybody's saying the same thing. And then last year out of the blue... He sent an incredibly touching personal birthday video message. He also went out of the way to send several variations of blurbs for the book, which were all hilarious and different. He would always tell me on the phone or an email, we had to get together in person. After all, we're neighbors, he'd say. But then he'd politely decline any invite I would send him, and I had no idea what he was going through the whole time. Treat yourself to some of his work today, this week, and your whole life, RIP, to a true artist and rebel. I almost worked with Paul. If you're a drive-by listener saying you haven't heard the podcast before, I ran SiriusXM Comedy for 10 years, uh, 2004 to early 2014. And we used to do these pop-up radio stations where we would just create a radio station and salute one artist for three, four days. And we had a plan to do a weekend celebrating Pee Wee, I think in conjunction with a DVD release maybe. And two members of my staff, specifically Mark and Jason, were very, very big Pee Wee fans. So we were going to do this thing. We'll celebrate Pee Wee for the weekend. All right, what are we going to do? And the guys came up with the idea of we would play a sound effect, which would randomly generate what category of clip we were going to play, you know, something from the show or something from a movie, however it was going to work. The sound effect that the guys picked was for a slot machine. So you'd hear a quarter go in, you'd hear, I don't know, and you'd hear some wheels spin, you go ding, ding, ding. And then a voice would have said something like Pee-wee's Playhouse, right? So ding, 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 movie clip, something like that was the idea. 
So we sent it off to Paul's camp for approval, and they thought we were being a-holes, and that something, something pulling the lever of a slot machine, they thought we were being coy and alluding and making fun of something you might do in an adult movie theater involving pulling, you know, never occurred to us in a million years. The station never happened. We tried to explain, Paul, I'm sorry, that's not what we were doing. It was just a slot machine to get into which clip are we going to play. So it never happened somewhere, maybe, unless somebody threw it out. I haven't worked there in 10 years. There's an interview sitting there. There's all these clips. There's a production. Serious guys. Somewhere in the computer, there's a Paul Rubin special waiting for you to air if you can get somebody to clear it, but it never aired. Paul Rubens, 70 years old. See you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Mark Francis and host of a new podcast, The Messy Effect. Join us as we take you into the exciting new world of Argentine soccer phenomenon, Lionel Messi. And his new life at Inter Miami will bring you into the glitz, the glamour, the star-studded events, along with the exciting journey to a new world of U.S. soccer and international football with news and stories three times a week. Come along for the ride as Messi, Miami, and Major League Soccer experience the journey of a lifetime. Get the Messi effect wherever you get your podcasts.